Greetings all, yes it is time for another unofficial high speed tour. Taken by me holding a camcorder as I wander around and try to remember what the hell is in here. And since this is basically one of the largest collections in the world, I am not going to get everything right. Even some of the basic stuff I will probably mess up and put up subtitles uh, in the post, uh, fix it in in post as it were, in the uh, final editing. So what I am going to do now is turn the camera around and go for a little wander. Now the museum is still, or collection I guess technically, is still increasing in size. They have a few gaps for more vehicles. Well, I asked the curator about this, so well, what the hell? It encourages people to pay more attention to what's going on here. So the National oh, US Army's Armor and Cavalry Collection has found on Fort Benning, Georgia. Not open to the public as yet. Uh, keep uh, an eye on the space. They, they keep asking about uh, doing uh, open houses. So we'll see. So you walk in the door, you come to a welcome to, copy of Armour magazine and a horse hooray because it is the cavalry collection as well so we start off with one that they're quite proud of this model 1916 scout car or armored car with a four liter engine that is generally in good nick actually the entire vehicle is in pretty good nick as I turn on my light here or try to look inside they fixed up some of the wood Simple, very simple. Note the uh, slightly more complicated driver's control there on the steering wheel. Then the uh, Ford three-ton special, followed by an M1917, which also, as I turn on my light again, is pretty complete inside. So I may have to come back for this one. Finishing up the World War One section is this Mark 8 International, which they only just got in. You checked our Facebook page uh, a couple of weeks ago. And for a World War I tank, this guy has been very well preserved. For some reason, we have a Dodge Command car right here. And then, a Panzer II. So we're now heading pretty much straight into the World War II section here. Uh, the American Interwars, there have a few pieces. Early Stuart complete with the, uh, the Sponson fixed machine guns. Then a Hargo. I'm not sure what it looks like inside, but these holes might be a giveaway. Let's see. Well, there's an engine. There appears to be some form of interior, so I might come back to that. M3 American 37mm gun. And vaguely looks like a Japanese 47, but we'll see. White scout car. I think this one's supposed to be in pretty reasonable nick as well, actually. Yeah. Not bad. Late model M3. And what looks like an M2 light. Six pounder in American service known as a 57 millimeter. My camera tripod because I was filming earlier and Tiger 712 which is in the middle of restoration so if you look inside it's quite empty but they still have all the pieces so one day they will put it back into shape and we can all admire the marvel of engineering that is a Tiger M2A1 scout car Definitely an M2. Note the step at the rear here. And a Mark IV. Now a lot of purists are going to go, why did they destroy these vehicles by opening them up? Well, because it was either that or they were going to get scrapped. So the theory was that if we turned them into training aids, 
then there's an excuse for the army to keep them because the army is not really in the business of keeping museum pieces per se so with that excuse by removing the side plates on one side only so you see from this side the tiger looks perfectly intact you still get the impression of the tank in one piece but as a student or observer you can see what's inside now again these vehicles some of these were stored in the open air with open sides not the army's bright shining moment but at least they were kept okay the first of many half tracks well German type half tracks Actually, in all fairness, this one almost looks like she could be a runner. And a Pack 38. I like the spare wheel. So that's a 5 centimeter gun. That's not the 5 centimeter gun. Panzer 3 with uh, the long, the L60. Pretty intact in the outside. It's obviously an earlier model hull because we still have those side hatches. Yeah, I have to climb up and have a look. And then an early model T34. There aren't too many of these uh, 76 tanks left around because as many of them as possible were converted or destroyed by the Germans. This does look like a very early one though. All right, now this one is an M3A1. I'm going to hop around back on this side because there are a couple of interesting prototypes. T5E2, as I recall, with the twin 37. Now, although they, they look kind of similar to the twin 37s by American Armament Corporation, as found on the MTLS, they aren't. Uh, the interior of the vehicle is a bit of a mess. Uh, same with uh, this M2 medium. Uh, the one that is in uh, Fort Lee is in somewhat better condition. Speaking of Lees, so this guy, apparently formerly of Brazilian service, uh, is a Lee that still has the cupola up top there. But it is an early one. Note the counterweight on the M2, the 75mm gun M2 that came before the M3. They only welded up one of the two machine gun ports here. The red lenses, we're not sure where they came from. We think that was uh, this vehicle was restored in the 1970s a bit, and that's when the red lenses came on. And we have again a Stuart. And a cutaway of a 75. Better be a 75, or you make a, uh, make a liar out of me. Gun 75 M3. And next to the Lee, we have a Grant with the British turret. So uh, there aren't very many places where you can see a Grant and a Lee side by side. It is worth noting that this one is a welded hull one as opposed to the rivets on this. And yet another Stuart. So the nice thing about this is that they actually have it with the flag the correct way around. No, they don't. It's wrong. In World War II, they had it the other way. Okay, uh, maybe I should uh, edit that bit out. We'll see. They probably know about it. I'm sure I've mentioned it before. Uh, I suspect they received this vehicle in this condition and like many other things, they have much higher priority problems than fixing the paint job of this uh, torch painted Stuart. But in World War II, the uh, flags were, the blue was always top left, the Union. And then we get to one of the, uh, one of the earlier M4s, so it's like an M4A, is it is this a regular M4? Small hatch, look at the engine deck. Oh no! It looks like a, uh, looks like probably a diesel, that correction, a, uh, an A3. I'm looking to see how many cooling ports there are. Yeah, I think it's uh, an early, early M4A3. So 
So the gun here is off of a Gun Motor Carriage M3, the half track that I recently released, cross posted from the World of Tanks channel with the lanyard firing control. Kubelwagen, Pack 40. I know there's a name for this thing, if I recall, it's one of the taper guns. Uh, Martyr, let's have a look. I think this was in Reasonable Nick as well, actually. Not bad. Turn on the light here. There we go. Now, this Stug is the only vehicle that is chained off because this is one of the few vehicles they have that still has the original paint. Now a lot of it looks very dirty, but in places you can make out the actual original color that still remains. Never got repainted. And uh, this is the one vehicle that uh, they want to make sure you don't come up and touch. Constabulary colored uh, Jeep with a recordless rifle. Constabulary with a police force, shall we say, the occupying force in Germany after the war. This was an ARV with a dummy gun and a blank top, but all the ARV equipment has been removed from it. All right, so this is an A1. Again, small hatch, and uh, I don't think it has a loader's hatch. Followed by an M10, I'm happy to say, with the three inch gun. There's a lot of M10s with the 17 pounder out there. Not so many with the three inch. Take another 37. And the Firefly. So I've written several reports on this one, uh, or transcribed them, shall we say, from the US Army testing. And what this was originally was they sent the turrets over for testing. And for testing purposes, they put the uh, turret onto an M4A3 hull. Uh, because all they were testing was the gun. I mean, they knew what the, they knew what the, uh, the hull could do. Uh, didn't go well. Uh, the Americans rated it worse than either the 76 or the 90 millimeter for general purpose use as a tank. Uh, but what they ended up doing here, uh, just really to honor the Canadians, is they've uh, put this on a regular chassis, I think it's an A2 now, uh, with, as you can see, the bow gun is retained. Uh, just to say, this is more or less what a Firefly looks like. And the Canadians have done something similar. They also received a turret that they plunked onto a Grizzly. And that's what you get. Uh, Staghound. An Axrod. A uh, two, three, four slash four or something. Yeah, there it is. Let's see what this looks like inside. I have not looked yet. Rear driver's position. Yeah, some of these German vehicles. I need to come back with a script and cover properly because they really are in good condition. All right, so now we get to the M5. Hmm. Interesting. It's an M4 with the uh, with the small hatches, but they put the driver's uh, correction, the commander's uh, vision couple up top. Stemma with this guy with the 105. Locust. Well, they need a bit of work on that one. They don't have a gun or a mount lift. It's like a pumpkin or something. It's. Oh, we need to look it up. But this 251 also is in excellent, excellent condition. As I turn on my light here, just in case. Oh, the back door's open.
next to which is a Sturmhaubitze without the muzzle brake, which kind of confused me a little bit. The Jagdpanzer 38T. Jagdpanzer 470. And I'll come back to the Panther in a second. Everybody's favorite, T28. Also in surprisingly good condition inside. And we think this T23 is in surprisingly good condition inside because we look down the louvers and we can still see the motors. Remember, this was an electric motor vehicle. They built 250 of them. It was a complete wasted effort. Uh, but unfortunately, the things are welded shut. So one day they'll have to come back and unweld them. And so I'm trying to figure out which is which here. So the T30 is on the far side. And that would be... I'm going to guess that's the T34, so this is probably a T29, the 105. The Panther. Also has been cut away. Let me get my light. I mean, this is repairable. It beats those drawings that you get in Osprey magazines that were cut away. And the same with the King Tiger. Which all things considered, is not in bad condition. Absolutely massive turf. And of course, if you want to know what they look like, not chopped up, you just go and you take the photograph from the other side. Schumwagen, pack 43, I presume. Oh, right, yeah, the Panther 2 hull. Would they just put a generic Panther turret on top? Because realistically, that's what it would have come out with anyway. Uh, it didn't have the, the Schmal turn that was uh, that came long after the Panther II's development was cancelled. Uh, but this is uh, the only remaining Panther II that was built. Sorry for the spin around there. And that's the creator's office. So out his window is the Panther II. In fact, he's got a, let's just stand in front of where his office is. There are worse views you could have from your office. Oh, I got a view overlooking Central Park. I don't care, I'm overlooking a Panther 2 and a T28. Uh, I think this room is locked, okay. They have a classroom in here, actually. Uh, behind this wall, behind those two double, double doors. Uh, Tank Destroyer, it's an M5, 3-inch gun. And this guy is a 90mm Toad, T8 as I recall. There are multiple different variants of chassis and uh, uh, carriage, sorry, which are tried for this 90. M20, command car or armored utility vehicle. She looks like inside. Uh, well, functional, I think it's probably the word. And then another Furman. 
again a late model. Sitting next to it is a Churchill Crocodile. You can see the uh, fuel pipe on the back. They do have another Churchill here that's not a crocodile, it's not openly on display. And one of the Jumbos. Now, as I recall correctly the story, and I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, the 76 on this came off of Cobra King. Cobra King was, that, of course, that famous Jumbo that uh, broke the line into uh, Bastogne in the Battle of Bulge. And uh, in order to display Cobra King in its original configuration, they needed a 75. Well, they just swapped, they, they basically what they did in World War II is they swapped the gun with a 76 that was hanging around. Uh, put the 75 back into Cobra King and the 76 went back into this guy. M18. Well, this is interesting. I'm gonna have to ask what this one is. Flame tank, oh, I think it's a flame tank. So what I'm looking at is the M4A1 cast hull, the T23 turret, and a short stubby gun. But look at the gun. I would lay bets that was a flamethrower back in the day. Turn on the light again here, let's see what I see. Yep. Almost certainly a flamethrower. Chafee. M32, as I recall. So one of the recovery vehicles. Oh, they have two Amtraks. Followed by a Pershing. Jackson on the other side complete with the armored roof and then a priest the m7 you wonder why it's not in uh, fort sill as it were why is uh, armored force taking uh, the armor school holding it i suspect for two reasons although i've not asked one is it shows you just the versatility of the sherman chassis and they love their shermans here and the other is that the driving force for the m7 was actually armored force uh, uh, Jake Devers uh, comes in to take over after uh, Chaffee dies and uh, he has artillerymen saying hey look we have this great great idea for a self-propelled mount and Devers being an artilleryman and that, that was part of the reason they selected an artilleryman to come in and head armored force was uh, because they knew they were having problems with uh, artillery integration uh, plus there was a turf war going on between infantry and armor at the time. They weren't getting on well, so they needed a neutral guy in charge. Uh, and so courtesy of armored force, the M7 is built. And then we have, of course, a standard M4 76 HVSS. More constabulary colors on the M8. And then a IS-3. Why not? Centurion with a 20-pounder. Don't know what it looks like inside. Uh, was it T37 Phase 2 or Phase 1? I would have to look it up. Note the external machine gun pods on the side and rangefinders. This, of course, would be basically turned into the M41 Walker Bulldog. SC100. T3485 and a M46 and note the exhaust on the sponsons. Oh, there's your M41, maybe even a T41, I need to check. And a T69, which is intact inside, although I need to get my tetanus shots updated before I go inside. Still, a project for them to fix. It is in a fixable condition. And I look forward to coming back and doing a bit more detail on this guy. If you don't know what this actually is, it's basically the T-42 
was the light tank uh, that it was uh, based on, medium tank, I'm sorry, uh, which eventually got cancelled because it wasn't working very well. They, they took the bottom of the M46 and turned that into the M47. Uh, so they have these holes sitting around and they use them as the base for the oscillating turret uh, medium tank, which became T69. M74 armored recovery vehicle. T54 and a T43. So this is your prototype, which will eventually become the M103. Now, what you're looking for here is the position, as I zoom in, of where the gunner's uh, periscope is on the original vehicles versus the later ones. Because that's one of the things they did. Uh, M38, I believe, was that designation, and the Jäger Panzer Kanon. The Leopard prototype that they have here, note it is so early, it does not have the coincidence rangefinders on the turret, uh, is surprisingly intact inside. So I could come back to that at some point as well. There are so many things I can, I can come back here many, many times uh, to see various things being built. And then we have an M47. Which again, they've well, cut open the front a bit, rather. And let's see what we have. It's, again, fairly intact inside. Uh, but this was a training vehicle, as evidenced by the gantry, that people could climb up and then look in. Oh, look in the turret. I can never remember the M59 from the M75. I think this is a 75. I would need to check. M60A1. And an early Chieftain, still with the ranging machine gun uh, in the turret. The AMX-13 is unfortunately welded shut, so I can't get into that. Uh, all I, the best I could do is see the autoloader, which if you, let's see if I can do this right quick. Let's see, if I here. Yeah! So if I open this up, you can see the, sort of the revolving autoloader. that they used on this mm -hmm. tank. Oops, it's been falling off the tank. Fortunately, I have another point of contact. <clears throat> the T62 looks ratty on the outside, but on the inside it's basically in service condition. It's pretty much the way it was captured in 91. And another 54. Maybe one of the 54s is a Type 59. I don't know. I'd need to check. Israeli M51. Again, I'm told this is better on the inside than the outside. Another M60 with a rare light on the front. I mean, it's an A1 of some sort. M113 A cav. And this is the, uh, the M48. Uh, it's, well, it's based off of an A1 because it has the five rollers. Probably an A3. Again, I would need to check. And the M67, which I did the inside the hatch on a little while ago. A Vietnam veteran, that particular tank. MBT-70. It is, unfortunately, a wreck inside. There is nothing inside there for me to film. I've looked. But at least it still has a 20 millimeter. I'm hoping that the one in Germany is in better condition. So here's the, uh, the A2 model of the M103. And you can see how the gunner's periscope has been moved uh, much closer. Ontos is in, turn on my light again. You've got to say, that one's in good nick. 
Of course, the guys in uh, the museum, the American GI, are very proud of their own toss and they want me to do that one as well. So we'll, we'll see. But generally speaking, let's see. Oh, there you go. Very long breach. They always close things. It's something that annoys them. They get visitors come here and they leave hatches open or whatever that they shouldn't. All right, Sheridan, hooray! And it looks like a mutt. Yep. Again with a recordless rifle. The T114 is the prototype for the M114. And if you look at it, the the T114 is a much more complicated shape. And they decided this was not going to work. They needed something. Uh, they needed something a bit simpler to manufacture. Although I do like the way that their uh, toe pintle is well, sort of locked in place. But it just drops down. It allows you uh, room for a very big door. For some reason, on the 114, they quit that. Although even the prototype had that ridiculous bow with the uh, the tracks well behind. SS tens on this Jeep, guided with a, a fixed post and a joystick, a bit like a Sager. Uh, apparently, they had like 300 test fires and got 10 hits, something like that. There is a reason it did not enter widespread U.S. service. Uh, LVTP5, as I recall, the M51 here, I've already done a video on, and an M60A2, the condition of which I have not really looked into. This would be your M803. So when the uh, when the MBT70 project was cancelled, they tried to make an austere variant uh, using some of the technology. Obviously, it didn't go anywhere either. And honestly, I'm not sure what it looks like inside, but if it's like most of the other relics from that era, it's probably completely empty. V150, M42 Duster. The CEV, the 728 here, apparently also is in pretty intact condition inside. Uh, now that, of course, they're out of service, I guess this is my best option. XM800T. I've got to figure out if they've ever figured out how to open the... Uh, I had to open the hatches because it was kind of stuck last time we looked. The 808, the video for that just absolutely shot off. I, I don't know why that one was so bad. I mean, it's a pretty cool vehicle, don't get me wrong. And you will note that since I, was, since I filmed my video on uh, the 808, they have replaced the tires on the front and back. Yeah, because you remember that uh, they had put uh, commando wheels on them just to get the thing moving because look at the condition of the tires they don't make these things anymore and they couldn't roll on them but that's what it looks like now so if you if you compare this image with my inside the hatch video there you go CVRW and a ferret M48A5 one of the few vehicles in here in the Mercy color scheme. We're talking about doing something up in Master as well. Uh, is there anything else in Mercy? Uh, the Duster. There you go. Duster's in Mercy as well. That was the late 70s, early 80s camera scheme before they moved to this NATO 3 color on this M60A3. Uh, they do have an S-Tank. Don't know if it works, but it probably did when they parked it. And an XM1, or a pre-production M1. Uh, in surprisingly good condition inside. I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad either, so I can definitely come back to this. What's interesting is, if you look at the commander's weapon station, as I come around the side here, It's different from the Service M1 because at the time they were still planning 
on putting the M85. And you can see how the gun uh, would feed from a 90 degree angle, shall we say, from the, uh, the ammunition bin, which is bigger than that of the M1, but doubtless cause all sorts of trouble. Early Bradley, BMP1, K12. Well, this had better be, or I'm going to make uh, an embarrassment out of myself. This should be a smoothbore. I uh, can't tell. Let me turn on my light again. It seems to be. So it's the success of this gun in trials which led to the selection of the smoothbore on T62. This is a 100. The T62 smoothbore is a 105 bored out. Uh, 105 rifle bored out into a smoothbore. MTLB and a BMP2. We come around to a slightly more modern section here with what is either an M901 or a Fist V. Kind of hard to tell from the back. I'm going to go with Fist V, the fire support team vehicle. So instead of carrying a weapon, this is cameras, designators, range finders for artillery call for fire. Yeah, based off of uh, something like an A1, because you can see the steering tillers at the far end and the pivot steer handles. So this is back in the days when pivot steer in the US Army actually meant lock one track. A Humvee and a 577. Again, in pretty reasonable nick. Then an M1. Probably an IP looking at it. Let's see if they've taken off the MRS. Don't know what that one looks like inside. Probably empty. They had this terrible habit of emptying all the electronics out of vehicles before coming in. Uh, M60A1 Rise Passive. So this would be the configuration of a Marine Corps vehicle such as was used in the 91 war. I have a suspicion that this might be the tank that was parked in front of the Marine Corps barracks at Fort Knox. Eventually got parked in front of the Marine Corps bar barracks at Fort Benning. And then when the Marines said goodbye tanks, uh, they were just able to bring this vehicle over this way. Challenger 1, uh, the prototype of Challenger 1, I've already done a video on. I would need to look what that one is, honestly. M1 TTB, again, a complete wreck inside. The, the autoloader is actually in reasonably good condition, but the rest of the vehicle, not so much. So I would refer you to my, my very, very brief video on that. T72. It's a bit like a two-pounder, doesn't it? I don't know what it is, though. And then that brings us uh, outside of a couple of uh, anti-tank pieces. That one on the left there, I believe, is a French 75 reboard by the Germans. Uh, take German ammunition. And last but not least, Striker MGS number one. Uh, I am not allowed to film the inside of this one yet because it is still officially, uh, the Striker is on the books. Uh, however, it is being divested and soon they will be out of the army inventory and I will be able to film around all the pieces inside. Uh, but it is, generally speaking, intact in one piece and I am looking forward to getting into that one. Huh. There we go. So I'll just go, I mean, I know this is publicly available because I've seen it in public shots. So you have the replenisher autoloader here. And what it does is it replenishes the, uh, the autoloader further forward. If you're kind of curious how that works. Up top, that's only the breech and uh, insertion extraction assembly. 
there are no rounds stored up in the reach. Let me close this. There, I'll get it in a second. I'm done anyway. So that's the inside of the tankodrome, as they call it. So I'm going to have a quick wander around outside and show you some of the things there. Uh, and then we'll be done. So, cut. All right, so I have now cut to the outside after putting away a few things and closing a few hatches. Uh, PT-76. Uh, they, they have a couple of spare vehicles kind of scattered around all over the kip. Uh, but as you can see, I'm walking towards the Panzer IV Hydrostat and hence that's got the very weird rear uh, on the hull and that is a hydrostatic transmission as far as i know just one exists now to be found in fort bed <laughs> uh, let's see what else do we have here it's another m60 of some sort one looks a lot bigger than the other for some reason oh, the other is a 48 that's why an early stug no, wait, that's a, uh, that's a Stu, I think, 105. HSTVL. Not in the greatest shape, I'm afraid to say, but the, uh, some of the interior components are still there, so we'll, might come back and have a look at that. An M256 cutaway. M5 with uh, fording kit. A couple of M16s. Another 60. What am I looking at here? Another M48, looks like a Marine Corps version. Ah, Commoner Garden M4A1. 76 HVSS, so that's one of your examples of not everything with the HVSS and the 76 is an easy 8 per se, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, that's not where I'm going. It's kind of everybody says that the M4A3 E8 is the only easy 8. Well, this is an M4A1 E8, put it that way. Of course, technically, yeah, M4A1 76 HVSS. Another T43. Not so sure about the torsion bars in the front of that one. That's possibly asking for some trouble. A bunch of engines. Don't ask me what from. And this looks kind of like a 551 of some sort. An early, early 551. As I'm looking at the whole side, I think it's an XM. I do believe we have here an XM551. Oh, looky here. Do we have a 59 and a 79 side, a 75 side by side? As I walk. Well, it looks like it's in the master scheme. Then it's very, very faded NATO 3 color. All right, so that's your M75. Makes that the M69. A couple of Medic 113s. I think the Belgians were the only other user of the 75, if I recall correctly. And there's more over here, so I'm going to cut again. I'll just uncut while I walk past the hydrostat here. I didn't bring my light. I have no idea if there's anything in there. This unfortunately was one of those tanks that was sitting out front in Aberdeen in the open air and it suffered accordingly. I mean, now we're starting to get to some vehicles that nobody ever talks about. They're hidden away in the back. So this XMH 
was uh, used for drop tests, airdrop tests. I suspect one airdrop too many. Another panther, why not? Just kind of sitting in the corner here. I do believe that's a rocket launcher. If I recall, this was, was a T21 or something. It's uh, mounted on top of a Sherman. Aim a normal Panzer, uh, Panzer III. It does have the Vorpanzer. Sherman with some, okay. Looks like waiting gear, but it's very heavy duty for waiting gear. No, it was definitely more than waiting gear. I'm gonna have to ask about this one and let you know in the subtitles afterwards. Which I'll put up something saying what what on earth this uh, Sherman variant is. Another M4. All right, so this one is an A3E8 or 76 HVSS. Another the egg panzer, why have one when you can have two? And an early, oh, hello. Early panzer three, or oh, is that a dummy gun? Well, the gun is rifled. Mantlet does not look right though. I need to look that one up. Huh. There's so many vehicles here, you never know quite what they have. Uh, okay, we have another late model Stug. A Whippet British, which apparently is not in great condition inside. Neither is the Vickers Medium. Or, or whatever, it's Medium Mark II. Apparently it's not officially called the Vickers Medium. And an Asheron. Not in as good condition as the one that the Netherlands have fixed. Obviously, somebody took issue with its existence. Now the Churchill, as I say, is not one of the crocodiles. It's have an interesting gun, doesn't it? Now, the 1922, which originally came with a bizarre cable suspension, but looking at it from inside, uh, as you know, looking into it as best we can, it seems that the cable suspension was replaced by some form of fixed suspension. So the cables are no longer there, but all the bolts and the pulley wheels that the cable suspension used are still here. And the other thing to note is the way that these track links work you know, they're obviously frozen in place, but they, uh, the links are, can pivot side to side, uh, as well as obviously uh, the shoe will link here as well. So make of that what you will. Oh, I should have brought my light. Oh, they've got another martyr. Now the other one's based off, of, oh. Okay, so this is a, uh, a late model off of the Jagdpanzer 38, or the Panzer 38. And it seems to be in reasonable condition. It needs a bit of cleaning up, but it's not bad. And that's it for here. Now in these various bays, uh, they have a lot of bays here. Uh, this used to be where Bradley maintenance was taught back in the day. And uh, it is now given to the collection and they're using it for storage or maintenance work. 
and inside so I would recommend if you're if you have an interest in this sort of thing hop over to their Facebook page and they'll give you photographs of things that they're working on such as the Italian M14 which is in one of these bays closed up right now and I can't show it to you uh, but uh, various things like that are going to be available there so there's one more section of tanks okay and the last section I'm going to talk about now uh, right now they have a T62 a Max Pro MRAP which the door is open which probably shouldn't be I'll go close that in a second because the rain will get in horseshoe armor on this I guess it's a type 69 interesting the hatch is open there for the, the site an Enigma T55 or type 59 can never quite tell at a glance yet another panther the T29 E3 another type 69 another M48 and finally this wide tracks looks like an E9 M4A1 